Hi everyone, today let's take a quick look at inflation. Do me a quick favor and like and subscribe and watch the video till the end to help out the channel and let's get started. So they say here inflation has slowed but don't miss the forest from the trees. We have seen slowing inflation but that does not mean that inflation hasn't taken place. We've seen a massive surge in prices 25% since 2020 and that is a giant mountain here. You can see this massive upswing that we've had. This is the part that normal people feel and we've seen it across all of the major markets. US, UK, Europe, Canada, all of these have gone higher. Canada actually the lowest just by a little bit which is interesting but this is what we're seeing in the inflation data. It is grinding slowly higher more similar to what we saw from 2016 to 22 and then we saw this massive upswing over the last couple of years and it's obviously not just food. The whole consumer price index is up 23% over that time period so inflation has obviously been massive. What we're looking at is the shorter time frame inflations month over month and year over year which have slowed significantly but the question is will Will the economy and will wages be able to catch up with this massive upswing that is affecting the real economy out there? So just keep it in mind. 2% inflation doesn't mean 2% inflation over the last four years, and that will have a greater effect on the economy in my opinion. So far, the economy has stayed robust and paychecks have been growing with the consumer price index to some degree, but the higher costs of living and the broader economy will be an issue at some point. And like I said, just keep it in the back of your mind as markets continue to push into this bubble, in my opinion. So looking at the fear and greed index, you can see we finished at a 41. Last week, we were at a 38. So we did get a slight step higher, argue maybe a low, slightly higher low on the fear and greed index, which is all coming off of the low that we saw in April. So markets are holding up okay. And if you actually kind of look at this structure, it does look very similar to what we're seeing on seasonality, but they are still mixed markets. Momentum is still an extreme greed, still extreme fear here on strength and breadth. Put call ratio still in greed, while volatility is hovering in neutral as it starts to trend a little bit higher towards that SMA, which is sitting right around that 14 level. And then looking at bonds here, you can see they are both still sitting in fear. So definitely mixed markets here as we head into the Monday trading session. Moving over to the AAII survey, you can see we finished really about the same here. 44.4 on the bull read, 44.6 on the previous bull read. Neutral did step up slightly to 33 versus 29, which makes sense. Markets have been relatively flat. And then the bear side getting extremely low, down to a 22.5. That is very concerning. Seeing the bears so low, typically that is a contrarian metric. If all of the bears have left, that's when we tend to see bigger down moves. And that is a pretty low read. Historically, we haven't seen that in a while. Even a month ago, we were down at a 26. 6.7, but a 22.5 on the bear read is a little bit concerning. Moving over to seasonality, remember that Monday trading session is supposed to be the low of the month, so we could see a pullback into that period. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you have that weakness, and then we start to see a little bit of a rally out of that. And on those election years, it tends to be a pretty dramatic run. You can see here, we're at about three quarters of a percent here for the NASDAQ, and then we rally up to almost a 2% gain on the month. So could be a dramatic run over that last day or or two of trading based on seasonality, but remember that bearish period potentially Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Moving over to the calendar here, you can see the week after triple witching has been down 28 of the last 34 with an average loss of 0.8 since 1990. So again, bearish period during those first couple of trading days. And then the last day of the month is up 10 of the last 13, NASDAQ up 22 of the last 32. So pretty bullish read there on the last day of the month. And then looking at the calendar, we have consumer confidence on Tuesday, new home sales on Wednesday, durable goods and GDP here for Thursday. Day. And then we have Chicago PMI, Michigan data, as well as PCE there on Friday. Then moving to the actual economic calendar here, really nothing happening on Monday, just like we saw. And then looking at Tuesday, consumer confidence, that's at 10 o'clock. For Wednesday, we have new home sales, that's at 10 o'clock as well, as well as crude inventories at 1030. And then looking at Thursday, we have durable goods orders at 830. GDP, that's going to be the big one for the month at 830. Initial jobless claims at 830 as well. So definitely quite a bit of data on Thursday. And then like I mentioned before, we have PCE on Friday, core and headline. No forecast for that yet, but you can see the previous reads. Want to see this continue to trend towards that 2% number. And then Chicago PMI, previous number was a 35.4. And then Michigan data 
dramatic consumer sentiment, as well as the inflation projections. Again, still want to see those continue to trend down. They did have a little bit of a bump here in the middle of the year, along with the rest of the inflation data. But if this continues to come, but if this resumes a trend to the downside, we should be in good shape. Moving over to Max Payne, you can see Max Payne for this week is at 542. Stock price just $2 below that, so not projecting a ton of downside. Doesn't mean you can't swing one way or the other, but Max Payne is usually the magnet. And then you can see put call ratio is still very high at a 4.37. So again, that indicates we're probably not going to go too much lower. We do have a call wall at 540. So that would be about a 1% down move from current price. Bottom of the calls, 537, 538. And then you can see all of these puts in the market. You just don't expect to go lower than that. 535 is a decent level. 530 is a decent level, which is still a fair amount lower from current price. But then there's just all these puts and you don't expect to get into that zone. It's also worth mentioning there are a lot of options for a non-third week expiration at 1.77 million. So this is definitely going to affect markets. And then you can see that massive put wall way out of the money there at 515. Moving over to the charts, starting off with the SPX here on the weekly chart, you can see we continue to grind along this trend line. We did overthrow it a little bit, and then we finished basically right on top of it. So we can continue to do that. The trend line's just a few points higher at 54.82. So just a little bit higher, about 20 points higher for the week. Again, that's basically what we saw here. Didn't finish right on the trend line two weeks ago, and then this week we finished right on it. So that's gonna be a zone of resistance for sure. We can see in a very similar setup actually at the end of the the March run, finished just below it, finished right on top of it, and then we had pretty solid three weeks of down move, which ended up being about 5.5% of down move to that 21 EMA, which is actually trading around that 5200 level. Momentum, not super bullish, basically flat, and then you can continue to see that RSI divergence. RSI was peaking in March. We still have a decently high level here, but it is well below the highs that we saw in March at that 79 area, and current RSI is down at 73.36. Seven, so higher price, lower RSI read, probably going to push down to at least this trend line at some point, which is about 100 points lower from current price. And then jumping down to the daily chart, you can see that same movement. Really, it was the Thursday candle, overthrew it, gave it all back, gap down, and then doji. Nine EMA sitting there at 54.35, right in that same zone of consolidation from the previous from the start of the previous week and actually look at that volume on that doji it seemed like there was a lot of selling happening on that doji you can also see daily momentum rolling to the downside that's not a great indicator either and then moving over to the spy charts it actually looks a little bit more bearish already touching that 9 EMA at 542.92 I do have a level there 544.01 and then you can see that trend support on this shorter term channel sitting down there around 542.30 and then my next level 540.34 again momentum stepping down down RSI just barely broke below the SMA it is still trending higher so you could expect a small bounce kind of like you see here you get a break eventually it does get a little bit higher but once this flattens out and starts to trend down that's going to be a pretty bearish indicator we haven't seen it quite yet but it seems like it's in the process of moving in that direction moving over to the tasty charts here on the weekly you can see we didn't even get to that upper ATR band we did get pretty close that's sitting at 553.50 but we didn't quite get there that's a little bit of a bearish indicator usually Usually that means you're going to see at least a pullback to the 9 EMA, which is sitting at 531.51. Could take a week or two to get there, but usually you get a bearish week after you kind of get a failed test of that level. So something to keep in mind there. Still in bullish conditions on the weekly chart, so definitely still a bullish trend. But stepping down here to the daily chart, you can see we hit that upper ATR. We've been talking about it all week. We pulled back from that level, touched the 8 EMA sitting at 543.06. Could absolutely hold that level, push right back up to the upper ATR that's still sitting at 549. 45 so you could see about a one percent upswing touch that level and then potentially see a break from there similar to this where you get a push up hold the level push up come back down test the level push higher come back down test the level push higher you know your traditional trend but this is starting to flatten out could see some consolidation maybe a dip low similar to this so something to consider we also saw a step down on momentum that is not a great indicator either we saw some volume coming through on those selling candles you can see it here and then we did get that step down on momentum which is also concerning I actually want to go down to the four hour chart here just for a moment to highlight you can see that ATR stop is now in bearish conditions ATR resistance sitting at 549.72. So if you get into that zone, you would expect to find resistance in that area, which is basically at this previous high. We pulled back from that area. And now your price target on the four hour chart would be that 
541.53 level sitting there at the 55 EMA on that four hour chart. Moving over to the NASDAQ here on the weekly, you can see we hit that trend line and then pulled back. So that continues to be an important trend line. Let's go ahead and extend this one out just in case. Nope, just barely missed that one. Momentum still bullish, RSI still showing divergence. It did push back into overbought conditions on that weekly chart. So we're still sitting in the 70 area and it was just slightly higher than the previous candle. It was barely positive at 0.21. So interesting to see that there but the trend continues to be resistance the next resistance is going to be 19,925 and the high of the week was still short of that 20,000 area so the Nasdaq flirting with that major psychological level of 20,000 wouldn't shock me if we touched that level and then pulled back and if this starts to pull back your next trend support is sitting all the way down around 19,000 so pretty wide ranging move similar to what we saw here on that week of 10 June three and a half percent up move could see a wick and then a three or so percent down move into this previous range and we've seen candles like that before five percent down candles like we saw in mid-april and then stepping down to that daily chart you can see big move up doji candle reversal candle nine ema sitting at 19,538, right in that zone momentum stepping to bearish rsi right at the sma almost to the penny looking at the numbers there it's 7164 the sma is at 7166 so pretty much flat on that sma you could argue it is technically below it just by two one hundredths but i would call that flat it's also worth noticing the sma is in overbought conditions on its own which is also a pretty bearish indicator as a reversal area usually when you see that markets are at least going to go flat or turn down similar to what we saw here sma gets into overbought conditions in mid-december you get a couple of days of down move and then you can get that continuation back up sma gets very close to overbought conditions here at the beginning of february you kind of get this slow grinding price action so pull back in time or pull back in price is what you're looking for based on that SMA being so overbought. And then stepping down here to the Qs, you can see my support level, 477.69. I'll probably add a level at these previous highs. As we go into next week, this was price discovery, all-time highs for the Qs. And then you have nine EMA sitting at 477.20. So right in the same area as my current support. And then looking at that momentum again, two consistent steps down. Usually you start to get a little bit of follow through on that. 21 EMA sitting all the way at 465.61, also potentially concerning, but you still have the nine EMA, could hold that level. Let's go ahead and extend this one out. Could find some support there that's sitting at 475.82, something to consider. So overall, looking for at least a short-term pullback early in the week, which does fit with the overall thesis for seasonality. Moving over to the tasty charts, you can see that upper ATR is sitting at 486.59. And the high of week was basically in that same exact zone. High of week was 486.86. So we overthrew it by just a few pennies and then pulled back. Makes sense. We hit the level like we expected to, and then we pulled back. 8 EMA sitting at 461.02. Could see a pullback into that area. Could overthrow it to the 21 EMA potentially sitting at 442.69. So we're definitely in an area where the risk is to the downside. We're seeing that across the board, but the trend is still bullish. So still consider that. Price action is always king. And then stepping down to that daily chart, again, you can see momentum stepping down on that Friday session. 8 EMA sitting there at 477.83. If that zone breaks, ATR stops sitting at 468.06. Pretty much right on top of that 21 EMA, right in that same zone. Middle of the range for this trend. That is where we pulled back to previously at the end of May. Touch that ATR, touch the mid-range, and then we got the continuation higher. So something to consider. Could take a couple of days to get there. Again, fits overall with that seasonality. And then looking at the four hour just like we saw on the spy we're in bearish conditions atr resistance is at 488.98 and then we're potentially pushing down to that 55 ema on the tasty charts which is sitting at 475.12 so see how that continues to play still bearish momentum still volume coming through on that selling price action so lower time frames definitely bearish moving over to the russell the russell actually had a pretty positive week 0.82 it's right at the trend line here did reject from that but the shorter time frames look a lot better than this is showing so we're right here at support 198.75 held we're right above the 200 major psychological level want to see this break the trend and start to push back to this 206.50 area it's already had a pretty decent down move it topped out around 209.64 before pulling back over the last couple of weeks we did get a bullish candle first one we've really seen since middle of may you could argue this 28 may candle was slightly bullish but 0.16 is not a super bullish candle and we've been seeing that bearishness come through rsi stepped a little bit higher momentum not doing it quite yet yet. 
but I want to show this daily candle. You can see that 144 EMA holding as support. Moving over to the tasty charts, you can see we're right in the middle of the range. We're holding that 34 EMA at 197.41. This is the weekly chart, so we're bouncing off that level. Tested it two weeks ago, tested it again this week, looking for a push up. First ATR is sitting at 209.66, which is right in that range of the second price target that we talked about. I think we could get there. Similar to this move here, we got four weeks of bullish. We now have seen four weeks of bearish. Could see this trend up once again. If that level breaks, then you're looking for the next ATR, which could be around 217.12. You could also argue this is a low, higher low setup, so it's holding up a little bit better. We're also seeing momentum on the weekly chart step to bullish on the volume weighted MACD. Again, a little bit of a bullish indicator. I do like the Russell, so understand this bias is a little bit to the bull side. I think we're going to hold up. And then looking at the daily chart, you can see 144 EMA sitting there, 198.11, tested that multiple times, holding that level just like we saw on the trading view charts, overthrew it here, got to a lower level, testing it again, holding up at a slightly higher level. It is worth considering we are in bearish conditions, but I think we're potentially going to see a swing up, maybe even test that level, which is sitting all the way at 210.51. So right in that same level, 206 to 210 could be your price target at this previous high. And then if we get a double top, obviously that's going to be bearish. But right now it looks like we've established a little bit of a base and looking for a bit of a push higher. Of course, if that 198.11 level breaks, lower ATR price target would be 192.96. So that 144 EMA is a critical level. Moving over to the Dow here on the weekly chart, you can see this uptrend that we are currently holding. We had a very powerful move and that started to lose momentum. Three bear weeks, four bull weeks, and now we're kind of in this grinding sideways price action. Slightly higher low, strong. It was a strong week at 1.26%. Momentum starting to swing back to bullish. But the concern here is that we're just going to test this SMA again and then break. So could get one, maybe two more weeks of bullishness, overthrow it just a little bit and then get another breakdown, which could swing you all the way back up to my all-time high level at at 398.76. The actual all time high is closer to that 400 level, $400.72 right in that zone. So it could swing there, test that level at least one more time before breaking down. And then looking at that a little bit closer here on the daily chart, 192.44 is the current level. We've tested that two days in a row on the Thursday and Friday sessions. If it breaks that level and pushes, that's what you're looking for. It is back above all the EMAs and SMAs. Bullish momentum, RSI looks better. So the daily chart and the shorter time frames look more more bullish and you can see that is a wick high relative to this previous high obviously we're looking for a test of this level here from the highs that we saw in mid-may Moving over to the equal weighted S&Ps, you can see very similar to the Dow in terms of price action, except this high here from mid-May was lower than the previous high. That all-time high is up around the 170 level, and this previous high was up around 168.12, and since then we've pulled down, established this trend line here, so you had a low, and then that second low. We did overthrow the 21 EMA, but then we got a bull week, 1.17%, looking for a push to this trend line at least, which is right at my level, 167.53. Could overthrow it, that price level would be 167. 6976, but at least to that trend here, and then we'll see what happens. Still sideways consolidation. Right on top of all the short term EMAs and SMAs on the weekly chart, momentum swinging to bullish. RSI looks very similar to the Dow below that SMA. And then looking at that daily chart, you can see it quite a bit closer. You had a very clear trend, hit this resistance, established this trend line here, pulled back, held the level, tried to rally through, tested that trend line here, and then four days in a row of bullishness closed pretty much on the high. Bullish momentum, RSI looks good for a push to that next trend line and then we'll see what happens there if it overthrows you can hit that next level if it rejects from here your trend support would be down around 163.80 164 right in that range moving over to the ratio spy russell and nasdaq spy you can see the spy russell actually pulled back just a smidgen nothing crazy slight bear candle so more of a doji really we'll see if this has any follow through to the downside i think that it will the russell chart looks a lot better than the spy chart right now and we talked about it Looking at the major indices, and then you can see NASDAQ SPY also pulling back. Almost touching this trend line here, you can see we're riding that for a while. Broke through, hit this other major trend line, and then broke higher, and we're back above this now. Looking to retest it potentially, and then push higher. This is all-time highs for the NASDAQ SPY, so could absolutely continue to go higher. Momentum bullish, RSI bullish. It is worth noting that we still have divergence forming. This is a lower RSI read from the previous peak, but we have higher prices. And I don't have any levels really above this. Like I said, it's price discovery. And then looking at the SPY Russell, your next level here would be 2.78. And then your support would be 2.66. Moving over to the SPX divided by the M2 money supply, you can see we are still in extremely overbought conditions. The level I 
I watch is that 2205 level. That's the level from the November of 21 high and the previous peak in July of 23. We've since massively overthrown that and the M2 money supply has been contracting, but prices have continued to go higher and we've never really maintained above a 22.05 for any length of time. The last time we were above it was the dot-com bubble. Obviously that lasted a while, but eventually came crashing back down to earth. And I do think that this will do that same process at some point, but that doesn't mean that it can't go higher for a long time. The all-time high here is a 32.71 all the way back here in April of 2000 before we came crashing down. And when we did, we fell all the way back down into the 13 and 14 range. So just keep that in mind. This is not a great time to buy long-term in my opinion. Absolutely does not mean you can't continue to trade it to the bull side because it can run for many, many years, just like we did during the dot-com run. And everything still looks bull bullish here, momentum bullish, RSI bullish. You still have that same divergence. You can see we had a higher high back at the peak from the end of March, and now we are at higher price action with weaker strength. But again, this could absolutely push. Your next level would be 27.25, and current support is 25.91. We'll see if it can continue to go. We've had three bullish weeks in a row without a bear week. Usually you get at least one slightly bear week in there, just like we had here. Five bull weeks, one bear week, only about a half a percent. So could see it there, retest this level potentially, and then push higher. So something to watch for. Still looks bullish, but keep in mind we could see a slight pullback. Moving over to stocks that moved this week, we got Chewy and Carvana on the list today. We got Chewy up 15.04%. This stock has had a really big down move. It was down about 90% or so. You can see it here, 87.42%. Hit that 15 level which was an all-time low for the stock. So we just established that level when we got here. And then we had a really powerful week, 28% back at the end of May, and now we're getting a continuation. Your next resistance would be up at $30, which would be five more dollars from here. Chewy on a massive run. It's had strong volume. RSI getting close to overbought conditions, but this still looks very good. It's broken all these downtrend lines. So got a shift in the trend for sure. And then looking at Carvana, I guess I missed this one. I don't know why I didn't see it, but this stock has had an enormous run fell all the way down to $4 after being up at $359. So again, absolutely incredible. Falling 99% from its peak, absolutely insane. And then since then, it's rallied over 3,000% to its most recent high at that 200 SMA, which is up around 130. And this continues to look very powerful. Look at this run here from May of 23 all the way to July of 23 from $7 to $40, incredible. And it's actually continuing to run here. Your next level would be that 124.15 level, which would be about $10 higher from current price. Momentum's fading a little bit. RSI starting to show some more choppy price action below the SMA, but it's still within this channel and it does seem like it's going to push to that 200 or potentially the trend line up around 137. So something to watch here, Carvana and Chewy looking bullish going into next week. Moving over to Apple and Microsoft, Apple gave some back here, 2.35% to the downside. Current support, 207.14, big wick high, almost the same wick as the previous week. Momentum still bullish, but RSI hit overbought conditions two weeks ago, and now we're selling back off. See what happens here. If it holds support, we could push back to 211 or potentially the trend line up around 216. But if this level breaks, it's probably going to fall through there fairly quickly, back down to that 199.50 to 200 zone. And then you have trend support sitting down around 199. So risk reward probably to the bear side like we've seen on so many stocks so far. Microsoft, big bull week two weeks ago still continued to rally 1.63%, momentum bullish, RSI, same divergence, but looks bullish. Trend, if we were to hit it on this next week, still at 450 to 455, about another 1.5% up move potential. If that zone breaks, the next trend's all the way up in the 480s. I don't think we're gonna go that far, certainly not this week, but everything still looks bullish here on Microsoft. Moving over to Tesla and Nvidia, Tesla had a good week, 2.8% to the upside. Hit that 188.50 level and rejected from there again, but momentum is bullish. RSI starting to ramp a little bit. We did close above all the short-term EMAs, the 9 and the 21, as well as VWAP. We also closed at a new high relative to these last six weeks. Going back to the beginning of May, closed
closed not quite at the high of the candle, but higher than previous, above those levels like we talked about. So 188.50, probably going to touch that level at least this week. And then if that breaks 197.75, this looks a lot better here. Big dip low, big rejection, consolidation, starting to break higher. Tesla actually looking like a pretty good setup here going into this week. And then NVIDIA giving some back, 4% down, momentum, still bullish, RSI fading slightly. Still hard to trade this. Still stuck between these two trend lines. Hit the support level at 125.17. If that breaks, 9 EMA sitting down there at 106.04. It's definitely been extended. And it wouldn't shock me if we did get a pullback into that range. Just like this, you get extended for a while. Pull back, hit VWAP. VWAP is sitting down at 98.29. So certainly could test those areas. And it would make sense with a second week follow through. Usually you get two in a row once you're this extended. Just like we did back here at the beginning of April. Moving over to Meta and Amazon. Meta had been looking a little bit better, but now this week we got a clear reversal. So Meta pulling back to the trend line certainly could still hold the trend line and push back to 520. Momentum still looks okay, but RSI rejecting there, you can see it. Didn't even test the SMA, starting to break lower. That's not super great. If this breaks down, 21 EMA sitting at 485. Again, that'd be about a $10 down move, so not super great there. And then Amazon, this is a new all-time high close. Closed above my level 188.61. This looks very good here. Trend resistance is up around 195. I do like that setup. Very tight stop at that 188.61 level. Starting to push, gives you decent upside of around six to $7 before you hit that trend up here and then find some resistance in my opinion. But like I said, good setup. Amazon looking good going into next week. Moving over to staples and discretionaries. Both of these had a positive week, but discretionary is obviously the clear winner here. Staples still holding the level, 77.50. As long as that continues to hold, you should be in bullish conditions. RSI, it is bullish, but it's flat. Momentum fading. Want to see it hold that level a little bit better not testing it so deeply before holding at the end of the week. And then look at discretionaries. Obviously a massive run here, 2.4%. Makes sense with Amazon and Tesla both looking quite bullish. I'm sure this is going to push to that 185.36 level. Seems like a clear move to that next level. Doesn't mean we can't pull back a little bit and then rally through, but I would expect to test that this next week. Momentum, clear push, RSI, clear break well above the 180 level. Everything looks good here to that 185. And then we'll see what happens from there. 189.38 would be the next level. So looks like a bit of a risk on market like we've talked about in the last couple videos. Moving over to transports and technology here. Transports finding a base finally. We've been here for about five weeks. 55 EMA continues to hold. That is at 63.72. We're still at this downtrend line. We closed pretty much right on it. If it was going to break, it should do it now. And then I would like to see a push to that 21 EMA at least up at 67. 21. Very big difference here in this chart relative to technology. Technology had a massive week two weeks ago, 5.6%. Then we were basically flat, 0.33. Big wick higher, new all-time high on that wick. And on a closing basis, technically, but very minimal change on that basis. You can see we're right at the trend line. If you adjusted this trend line out to capture these previous wick highs, you would see we're right at that level. I don't prefer to use those levels. We gave all of that back right away, but it's up to you. You can continue to watch. Clear overthrow of the level if this support holds at 226.29 that would be a clear support if that breaks down there's a lot of downside potential so looks like we're starting to see a bit of a swing back into that old economy style move transports looking to catch a bid push to that 67 area that would be about a five percent up move on transports whereas technology clearly extended clearly overbought momentum still bullish could absolutely go higher this is all-time highs but on the risk reward basis it looks like transports are a better setup with support at 63.22. If that level breaks on a closing basis, it's probably going to be a bit of a bearish move, but I would be surprised if that happened. This momentum is starting to look quite good. Moving over to oil and copper. Oil continues to have another bullish week, 2.9%. It's finding resistance around that 81 area, and this trend line needs to hold that and push to that 86 if it's going to do it. Momentum says it still should be in good shape, RSI breaking higher, so I would expect it to continue higher. And eventually we should see those oil and gas stocks catching up. They're not moving with the oil price right now. And then copper continuing to have a bearish week here. You can see that last day of the week was a 2.63% down move. Momentum resuming to the bear side, RSI breaking down. And looking at that on the weekly chart, you can see broke the trend line. We've tested the two weeks prior and now we're breaking down 4.39 as the support. If that breaks, we're probably headed to the 21 EMA down there at 4.27. If that starts to break down, 
down from there. That is going to be a major economic indicator to me. Copper has been on a run, showing economic strength, and now we've had basically five weeks in a row of downward movement, and we saw that first week of bearish momentum, RSI clearly bearish, so not great there on copper. Moving over to Riot and Marathon, unfortunately these gave back all of the gains that we were looking at. Through the week they looked pretty good and then here for the week close they were not great. So Riot was down 9.3%. Momentum still looks okay, your support is still at 8.78, but it held this trend line here as resistance and that's not a great indicator. It's below all the EMAs and SMAs so not a great setup there either. Still very much a short term trading stock, the weekly charts do not look great. Similarly here on Marathon you can see we tried tried to overthrow this trend line, which we did, and then we gave it all back, still holding the 200 there at 18.82, and my support level at 18.78. That zone needs to hold. If this structure starts to break, you're probably headed to the 55 down at 1626. So pretty decent risk reward. Needs to hold this here, about 50 cents of buffer there before the support area. And it still looks okay. You can argue it's still finding support there. Could push. And if it does, it's definitely a good risk reward. It would push potentially up to this next trend around $23, $24, which would be a solid move around 25%. So I do like the setup, but all of these rejections do give me a little bit of pause. Moving over to breadth for the S&Ps, you can see 20-day breadth, big move higher, 70.5% on the week, gapped higher and rallied, momentum back to bullish, RSI back to bullish, right at the consolidation of EMAs and SMAs. I think this is probably going to push. I think we're going to see another week or so of bullishness, which should be bullish for the Russell as well. The rest of the stock starting to participate a little bit more, not just growth tech. Tech is actually at, as we saw, tech was at a bit of a resistance area, throwing a big wick and starting to pull back a little bit. RSI on both of these breaking higher momentum both looks good. So in terms of price targets, previous high here for the 20, around 77. I think we can get there within the week. And then 50 day, probably to that 21 EMA at 58.18. Then we'll see what happens from there. Maybe an overthrow to 62.28. 62.25. Moving over to 200 day breadth, we also got a pop here. It was a new low, held the 55 right now, so we're still in this consolidation. Could see another move higher to that 21 EMA. That is currently sitting at 72.43 right there. So it would be a lower high, which does fit with this overall thesis. But momentum, starting to see a little bit of a swing. Could be a lower high here. Doesn't mean markets can't go higher, but that is always an indicator that markets will eventually break. Breath waning here as markets continue to higher highs and that looks very similar to the peak that we saw here in May of 21 as well. Markets market breadth peaked in April of 21 and then the all-time high wasn't all the way here until November and December of that year. So markets were peaking at a 76 breadth and then you can see here after that peak markets gave a lot of breadth back and a lot of price back. So something to consider. We're seeing a very slow grind lower, and eventually that turns into a bear market in my opinion, but that doesn't mean that we can't make higher levels on the actual market while breath continues to fade. Moving over to the dollar, we've continued to watch this dollar run over the last three weeks, and I think it's going to continue to do so. It's above all the EMAs and SMAs, bullish momentum, bullish RSI, clearly within this trend channel. Next resistance, 106.8. Trend resistance above that, 107.3. If this dollar continues to run, that's going to be bearish for market markets. So continuing to watch this one still looks good. Three stacked candles closing very close to the high. Probably going to find some resistance around 106.4 at these previous wick highs, but we'll see how that plays. And I do think it's going to make a higher high eventually within this trend channel. Moving over to yields, yields in bearish momentum still. You would expect this to continue a little bit lower. We'll see how that plays out. The dollar looks bullish and yields look weak, so that's interesting to see those with inverse conditions right now. Next support would be 4.5 and 3.97 respectively, and it does look like both of these are going to continue a little bit lower based on that momentum. Moving over to bonds, J&K, big week, 0.45, new relative high close. We're above all of these previous weeks here, going all the way back to the end of March, so that's good. Headed towards that 94.8 level. We wicked it two weeks ago, gave a lot of that back, continued higher, headed towards that level. Got another resistance right in that 144 EMA zone, which is sitting at 95.42. We'll see how that continues to play. Looks good though. Momentum swinging to bullish, RSI looks good. And then similarly here, TLT, we did get a slight pullback. Momentum still bullish, RSI still bullish. Right at this trend, consolidation, grinding higher. Yields looked weak, TLT should break higher. 
9650 is the next resistance. Otherwise, your next trend resistance would be here around 9470, which is basically the wick high from this last week. So overall, both of these still look bullish to me. Moving over to volatility, the VIX got a positive week, 4.27, momentum swinging to bullish. RSI, it's right at the SMA, probably going to break that this week. We'll see how that plays. Got up into the 13.75 area and then pulled back slightly still grinding slowly higher. I still think we're going to hit 14.7. The question is, is that next week or two weeks from now? I think this is going to continue to grind slowly higher, similar to what we similar to what we saw here from November up until that March time frame. So see how that plays out. It seems like we're finding a little bit of support on the VIX, which fits with that bearish thesis for markets. Definitely mixed markets and picking the right market is important, but volatility for the S&Ps seems to be gaining some strength. Moving over to my accounts, I did fine on the week about $900. I'm using the close from the Friday session. Sometimes this resets over the weekend, but it should be around $615. So it's been good so far this week. The NASDAQ was up about a quarter. I was up around 0.85 or so. Still positive, still making money. And then in terms of my positions, obviously no change from the Friday video, but here I have my covered call at a 201 for the IWM. The IWM looked strong. I did have a 200 put there as well. It fell a little bit into the end of the session, but I think that was just probably end of the week spread. I think we're probably going to see a pop on that as we roll into the futures open tonight. And then looking at the queues here, covered call for 478, and that's for the Monday session as well. And then I have a strangle, 477 and 486. 486 is already almost in a 100% profit already. Probably should have taken that off or rolled it out. And then my put's a little bit closer to the money, 477. Got 38 cents profit on that already. 68 for each of those spreads, so about another $100 potential there. So everything still looks good as we roll into this Monday session with a slight, with a slight bullish lead lean for the Monday session. Let me know down in the comments section what you think of that inflation chart and how is that going to affect the economy over the coming years? Will we just see an upswing in everything and then it'll get back to normal? Or will there be a more dramatic effect over the medium to longer term? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. Make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.